A very good day, everyone. Here is the completion of the latest ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Minimum absent from the ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting in Cambodia. Association of Southeast Asian Nations Foreign Ministers gathers for a plenary session in Phnom Penh, minus Myanmar's representative. Meanwhile, spokesperson for the ASEAN chair says Myanmar will not be represented at this week's meeting after its military rulers declined a proposal to send a non junta representative instead. And now, the ASEAN, ASEAN has since late last year barred the Myanmar junta from joining its meetings due to its lack of progress in implementing the peace plan. The session came after Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen in the opening session of the regional forum. He adds that more executions of prisoners in Myanmar will force a reconsideration of a peace plan. The 10-member bloc had been pushing for Myanmar to adhere to a five-point peace consensus it agreed to last year and has condemned the recent execution of four democracy activists by the junta. ASEAN says we'll retain peace plan if Myanmar executes more prisoners. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen says the Association of Southeast Asian Nations will be forced to reconsider a peace plan agreed with Myanmar if the country's military rulers conduct more executions of prisoners. He adds that while the five-point consensus had not advanced to everyone's wishes, there had been some progress, including in providing humanitarian aid. The current situation had changed dramatically and could be seen as even worse than before the peace agreement because of the junta's execution of the activists. In case there are any more prisoners who will be executed, then we will reconsider our roles in the agreed five-point consensus of ASEAN. Myanmar's military last week defended the execution of the activists as justice for the people, brushing off a deluge of international condemnation, including by its closest neighbors. A spokesperson for the ASEAN chair said Myanmar will not be represented at this week's meeting after its military rulers declined a proposal to send a non junta representative instead. Myanmar junta frustrating everyone over peace plan. Malaysia's foreign minister says Myanmar's ruling military has been uncooperative and frustrated everyone in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations with its lack of progress in implementing a peace plan. I think more and more people, uh, or I would say everyone is frustrated uh, that uh, the five-point consensus is not uh, showing uh, any real progress and uh, we appreciate also the the good works of the two special boys, I think they have done uh, whatever that is humanly possible uh, to do what needs to be done. Uh, uh, but uh, we regret the fact that the junta has not been cooperative. Saifuddin Abdullah says, on the sidelines of the ASEAN meeting in Cambodia, the peace process should be inclusive of the junta's opponents and its implementation should also involve international organizations. Meanwhile, Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen also says that ASEAN will be forced to reconsider a peace plan agreed with Myanmar if the country's military rulers execute more prisoners. The 10-nation bloc has been pushing for Myanmar to adhere to a five-point peace consensus agreed last year and has condemned the recent execution of four democracy activists by the junta. Hun Sen says ASEAN's unity had been challenged by the political and security implications of the situation in Myanmar, which has spiraled into an economic and humanitarian crisis. Anthony Blinken participates for ASEAN Summit and no plan to meet Chinese and Russian counterparts. United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken participates in the ASEAN Summit in Phnom Penh. Most of the ASEAN members' focus will be on the code of conduct for the South China Sea. Other topics of the summit's agenda include the military conflict in Myanmar as well as East Timor's admission to the bloc. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations includes Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Ten other countries are attending the summit as dialogue partners, among them are Australia, Japan, India, and South Korea. A State Department official says Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is also at the summit, 
However, Blinken has no plans to meet neither his Russian or Chinese counterpart in Cambodia. Russia's Lavrov meets Myanmar's military leader in Napidiao. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov meets Myanmar junta leader Ming Oholein during his official visit to the Southeast Asian nation. The state-run MRTV reports during the meeting in Napitiao, the two sides discussed bilateral issues including way to boost tourism between Russia and Myanmar. In addition, local media informs Lavrov was expected to head to Cambodia to attend the meeting of foreign ministers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and hold a number of bilateral meetings. Myanmar has decided not to attend the ASEAN meeting. United States pledges free and open to Indo-Pacific after a joint military exercises with Indonesia. Commanding General of the United States Army Pacific, Charles A. Flynn, pledged in Indonesia to uphold a free and open Indo-Pacific after presiding over the opening ceremony of a joint military drill with the Southeast Asian nation. I think what's, what's really important is just the illustration and teamwork represented by all the leaders here and the countries and their uh, soldiers and capabilities that they brought together here today to, uh, to work together for a couple of weeks and learn from one another. So that, that's what's really important about what, uh, what's going on here today and what's been going on for the last couple of months and what's going to continue to go on. Thanks. Indonesian military says, named the Super Garuda Shield, it is the biggest military training exercise ever hosted by the two countries. At least 5,000 troops from 14 countries, including Australia, Japan and South Korea, are participating. The military drills, which run from August 1st to 14, are taking place amidst heightened tensions in East Asia, with the United States House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan despite furious objections from Beijing. Flynn declined to answer questions related to Pelosi's trip in a news conference following the opening ceremony. Marijuana tourism attracts tourists to Thailand. A pair of tourists walk into a store in the backpacker district of Khao San in Bangkok, Thailand, with the words legal cannabis and smoking room available here plastered on its glossy exterior. It's been like a pleasant surprise, if you go. I mean, because um, I came to Thailand, I didn't expect it. So, like, I think it adds to the scene really nicely, to be honest. Like, I've enjoyed just having a smoke, having a drink. It's been cool. I see in Amsterdam a lot of people in Holland, the whole of Holland, a lot of people come to visit Holland just for the smoking. So I think it's a good business for Thailand to do it, and they will attract more tourists. Before the pandemic, the country welcomed 39.9 million visitors in 2019, generating 1.9 trillion baht, or about 12% of gross domestic product. Ong Art says RG420 was already seeing hundreds of customers each day. He plans to open more shops in tourist areas and believes the plant will draw more visitors to the country. He also says cannabis and tourism are a match. In the first six months of 2022, Thailand saw just 2 million tourist arrivals. Such establishments have been springing up around Bangkok since Thailand decriminalized cannabis in June, though government officials have tried to discourage recreational use. Well, that's all the news in today's program. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekdays ahead. See you soon.